Rock and Country Church. Um, for those of you who don't know why we're here, we're here because of the risen Lord. Amen. I'm pray us in, and then they're going to get us started with some great praise and worship, and then uh, Brother Raul is going to bring a word for us. Gentlemen, if you'll remove your hats. Dear Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to gather like this. We just, we thank you for what you did for us, Lord. You didn't have to. We certainly didn't deserve it. And we're just so happy that even though we're sad that you had to give your life for us because of what we do and the sins that we perpetrate, Lord, we're just so thankful and so uh, blessed that you did that for us. Lord, we just ask that you lay your hands upon everybody here, that you'll open their hearts and their minds to the message that uh, Brother Raul is going to bring. We ask that uh, you'll bless Jim and Beverly for the wonderful praise and worship we know they're going to bring and just uh, allow us to have the celebration that only you, Lord, could have started. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Somebody give me a big amen. Amen. Glory to God. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yes, sir. Can I tell you he's risen? Yes, sir. He's alive. Yes, he's sitting at the right hand of God making yes. intercessions for me and you. You believe that this morning? Yes. Come on now. Have you had your, your spiritual coffee this morning? I need some help up here. Come on now. On the count of three, we're just going to say amen it's at the top of our, our voices. One, two, three. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're awake. Come on now. He lives, amen. Amen. He lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. That's right. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He bled and died. To buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. The future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Somebody yell hallelujah! hallelujah. I felt like this song was appropriate this morning. Kind of rock and roll ish right here. Jesus rolled that stone away. Amen. And then one day, well, I'll cross that river and I'll fight life's fight. No war with pain. And then as dead. Way to victory. Well, I'll see the lights of glory, and I know He lives. Sing it out now. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because I know, oh, oh, he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Because I know. He lives, I don't guess so, I don't think so, I don't hope so, I know, amen. amen. Are you at that place in your walk with the Lord that you know that there's nothing that can shake that faith of knowing, amen, amen. that he lives? We had the pleasure of doing a, 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 a wedding, I almost said funeral, a wedding, <laughs> a wedding uh, at the, at the uh, beach uh, just a few days ago. 
and me and Beverly both uh, were able to officiate it. So we, 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 we both stood up, and, and when the vows came, I talked to the man, and she talked to the woman. And it was really, it was really neat. It was really special, really sweet. But I brought up the fact that the first miracle we've heard that that was that Jesus performed was at that was at a wedding. And there's a there's a great lesson to be taken from that. See, they they went to Mary and they said, "We're out of wine. We don't know what to do." And she said, "Take your containers to Jesus and just simply do." what he says and I've found that in my life that things go a whole lot easier when I just do what he says amen, amen. It says if you love him you'll follow the commandments and all created things above all the wisdom and all the ways of man yes you were here before the world began
year ago meeting someone who is a fourth generation Wiccan. So their grandma, their mother was a Wiccan, their grandma was a Wiccan, the great grandmother was a Wiccan, and the fourth generation up, all the way up, was Wiccans. And when we met them, the Lord said, be a friend to them. Before you tell somebody that Jesus is a friend, you ought to show them that you can be a friend. Show the light of Christ. So for a year, we've been ministering to them. I knew who they were. God told me when I met them. And they knew who we were because we said we're Christians. But I want to share something very miraculous with you. They, they haven't said they were saved yet, but they've talked about Jesus. One said they caught the other praying, but something really wonderful happened a week ago. They had messaged us and they said, would you burn all of our occult books? Mm -hmm. They asked us to burn. Some of the books had been in the family for four generations. One particular book had been in the family for 25 years. And I thank God that as they see the light of Christ, they say, I know he lives. Mm -hmm. I know he lives. And I thank God that each one of us have seen that light. I thank God that in places in my life, even after I was saved or I could look back and I said, I saw the light. Mm -hmm. Don't God just make sense of things? Mm -hmm. He brings things into light. We're privileged to see the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. I know Amen. that my Redeemer lives. Amen. It's 250 years. I just want to I wandered so aimless, I feel with sin. And I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. And I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Woo! I was a fool to wander astray. Straight is the gate and narrows the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Sing it out. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. All right. The fine man, I wondered alone. Worries and fears, I claim for my own. Then like a blind man, God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. And I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. One more time. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Yeah, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Hey, Amen. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. Amen. At this time, welcome the man of God as he comes and shares with us what the Lord has laid on his heart. There's two of them coming for this microphone. I'll see which one gets here. Good morning. Good morning. Dear Lord, I ask that you lay your hand for Brother Raul, that you will fill him with your spirit, Lord, that you will hear his mind, allow him to deliver the message that you have called him to deliver, that you will just uh, be with him throughout this and allow us, as the people listening, to receive that message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know it's a chore for some of us to, to be up around this sermon. So I just, I just want to thank you for, for being here. Uh, 
It's customary in the Spanish service. Uh, I want to pray that the Lord uh, takes over this teaching, this preaching, uh, so that I can get out of the way because I'm usually in, in the way of myself a lot of times. And I know through life that happens as, as, as we continue to grow. We, we, we kind of need to get out of the way and, and then God take over to, to, to get us and all things. So if you would gentlemen remove your hat. <clears throat> Father heaven, I come to you this morning, Father, just with a thankful and grateful heart, Father. I know you you do all, all things for me, Father, to keep to continue to guide me, Father, in all things, Father, that, that I may glorify you. And that's all I want to do, Father. That's all any of us want to do, Father. Yeah. And though we struggle, Father, we still carry on, Father. We try, we finish our race. We run our race and we finish our race. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit take over and that, uh, this message be your words and not mine. Father, I ask that anyone who hears this message, I ask that you reach out to them, Father, soften those hearts, Father, and let them receive this message. Open their hearts and their minds and their spirits to receive your message, Father, not mine. Father, I'm just <clears throat> an instrument of yours, Father, that you use to, to, to bring your word, Father. We know your word is not return to word, Father, so I ask that you bless you for everyone that's here, Father, and that we may continue to grow in you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's good, don't they? Let me get adjusted here today. The rooster again, of Peter, Christ. <laughs> Easter is a very special day. Without Christmas, there wouldn't have been an Easter. And my question is, what does Easter mean? And I looked up several definitions, but the one I, I, I settled on is, uh, it's not about the Easter Bunny, it lays eggs. If anybody finds one, I'd like a piece of that thing right there, because uh, that'd solve a lot of moral <laughs> issues anyway. Uh, Easter is a Christian festival which marks the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the triumph of life over death. And uh, there's no better example that we can look to than Jesus Christ because he did conquer death for all of us, you and I. So why are we here? We're here to remember <clears throat> the ultimate sacrifice that was made for you and I. To remember all the things in this life and all the blessings that we enjoy are because of one person. That's our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, amen. We are allowed to come and praise and worship Him, whether it's together, or in part, or alone in our homes. We're called to share His message. We're called to share His word. That's what we're supposed to do. Sorry about this. Jesus was born of a virgin. But was God at the same time that he walked this earth as a man, but he was God also. This is a time that we need to take to examine our own walk with him, where our lives are, where we'd like it to be, and where we need to be in our walk with Jesus Christ. Why do we need to do that? Let's look at just a few of the things that he did while he walked this earth as a man. He healed the sick, no matter what they had. He healed the lepers. He fed thousands of people with just a few fish, a few loaves of bread. These are all miracles. You were talking about the wedding. Mm -hmm. Turned the water into wine. It's the first miracle. That was amazing. Just imagine. And I remember part of that script says, that most people say the good wine for the end, yeah. and they served the good wine at the beginning. Well, it was all good because it came from heaven. And those are the gifts and blessings that he gives us. Everything that comes from God is absolutely top-notch, yes. first-quality, A1. He holds nothing back from those who love him. Nothing. Awesome. <clears throat> all he ever did on this life was good. He was perfect. He never did anything wrong. Never. Everything he ever did was for our benefit. 
back in that time, he came to save his people, the Jews. When they rejected him, thank God for us, he brought his message to the Gentiles. Wow. He brought it, and that's who we are. That's why he made a way for us to be able to reach out to God directly. Directly. Uh, and that's just, it amazes me that, that he thought that much of us. Mm. That, that, that he would send his own son to, to, to die for us. Mm. Uh, we didn't deserve it. We still don't. That's where grace comes in. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason we can come go to the Lord. Our Father is because of what Jesus did. It's yes. abundance grace. If you imagine somebody that, does, that always does good, always does the right thing, and yet the people he came for rejected him. They were always looking for a way to, to, to do harm to him. And in our lives, work lives, it's just human nature for those who don't know Christ to, to really not wish well on somebody. It's a lot easier for them to, to wish harm or, or, or something bad on somebody else. Whereas we, we're called to always, always wish well on others. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? Is that he calls on your enemies to be like, <clears throat> and be like <clears throat> bless your enemies and it'll be like heaping coals on their head. I found out what that feels like mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago. Uh, instead of fighting the inner battle of someone that was doing wrong, I blessed him. Hey. And the countenance on his face just <laughs> turned, turned. And uh, so I'm getting better at it. I'm not perfect by no means, but I'm getting better at it. So today is, is, is Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of this world. But I want to. I want to read a couple of the scriptures to you. If you have your Bibles on your phone, if not, you can look it up. You can always go back and uh, read, uh, look at the scriptures. But I'm going to show you how human nature is, is a mess. It was back then, it is now. So let's go to Matthew 21, verse 8 through 11. Verse 8, Matthew 21, 8 through 11. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawn them in the way. Verse 9. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So, let's break this down a little bit further. Before he's coming to Jerusalem, right on the scripture right before that says it, and, and one of the prophets prophesied that he would come into Jerusalem riding a donkey that no man has ever ridden. And so he sent his disciples, told them where to go, who to seek, and to go get it. And the, the owner of this donkey said, Yeah, take it. He said, The Lord has need of it, take it. What I need you to recognize in this passage is see how they received him when he came in, in, into Jerusalem. Praise and worship Hosanna in the highest. By the end of this thing, we'll see the human nature again of what a wicked people we can be. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, that's still true today. Yes. That's still true today. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 23 for next scripture. I'm just going to summarize the whole the, the whole chapter because it's 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 pretty long, but you can see this kind of lit a fire under the Pharisees and scribes and the high priest because in this chapter he was telling them everything that they were doing wrong, and I can only imagine when we're little kids when we're caught doing something and that feeling that we get whenever our parents say you did this wrong, you did yeah. this wrong. Just imagine that maybe a thousand, a million times worse because these were the leaders of God's church, of God's people. So when Jesus goes through, just boom, one, two, three, and the part that sticks out to me the most 
in this chapter is whenever he tells him, you won't go in the door, but you won't let anybody else go in. Mm. And basically, <clears throat> they weren't coming to God. They were doing their own thing. They had their, they had their positions they wanted to hold, their traditions they wanted to hold. They're used to doing things a certain way. And so they wouldn't come to God, but they wouldn't let the people come to God. You gotta do this, you gotta do this, much like today. And he told them, you won't go in the door, but you won't let anybody else come in the door. And uh, so, if as a kid, we feel terrible whenever we get in trouble, we get caught doing something, and we get corrected, basically it's what it boils down to, we're corrected. We accept that correction, but that feeling, so just imagine, a grown person that's in leadership, that's, that's leading God's people, and they wouldn't accept correction, but they weren't accepting, they wouldn't accept correction from Jesus, they wouldn't accept correction from God, because that chapter is all about correction, telling them what they need to do, and they still wouldn't change. They hardened their hearts even more to kill them, to kill them. And as we go further down in this, in this thing, if you remember, uh, Judas was always a weak link in this thing, in, in, in his uh, ministry. We knew that he was, uh, he was a treasurer. He always had control of the money. He knew what came in, what went out. Uh, and so we know where his motivation was. You know, even though he went, with, he was with Jesus the whole time, we always knew where his motivation was. He took his focus off of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to us a lot of times. We take our focus off of Jesus because we think we can do a better job of running our lives than he can. And that's where we have a hard time sometimes. We yeah. just want to do things our own way. We think we got the easy solution because we want instant gratification. We want a problem solved right now. We want what we want. We want it right now. And unfortunately, I can be a witness to this. That never works out. That never works out. Uh, because we have to wait on God's time. And as I age and as I grow in my faith, uh, that's something that I've learned and I continue to learn. But you have to wait on God's time. Mm -hmm. You know, Woody's told us a lot of times, a lot of times we think, well, God, I'll just help you. And we walk ahead and we leave Jesus behind. I'll just help you. <laughs> you know, we're not <clears throat> meant to walk in front of him or behind him. He says he walked alongside with us. Amen. And that's where God's timing comes in, is, is learning to be patient and waiting on him. Uh, so Jews betrays him for 30 pieces of silver mm -hmm. and a kiss. And a kiss. That kiss was his, his signal to the, guys, to the people who are going to come in and grab a hold of him. Wow. A kiss. Mm -hmm. What is more intimate? than a kiss, your wife, your kids, your grandkids. That's one of the most intimate things we as humans can do. Mm -hmm. A kiss means respect, means love. Mm -hmm. And yet that's what he chose to use to signify this is a God. This is a God. Can you imagine the trust that was broken? Now Jesus knew all these things. Yep. Nothing was surprising him. But for us to look at it, there's less to be known there. Everything that we do in life, everything, has to be done with love. With the same, same feelings that we give our, we give our wife or grandkids, especially grandkids, a kiss. That's the same kind of love we're called to do all things. Do everything as you, <clears throat> that you do. Do as that, as unto the Lord, as unto the Lord. So when they, uh, when Jesus betrayed, uh, when when Jesus betrayed him, they took hold of him and they took him to Pilate. Pontius Pilate and have his trial. And they were accusing him of, of all kinds of things. And Pilate gave him every opportunity yeah. to change their mind. Every opportunity to change their mind. And they wouldn't do it. Does that sound familiar to any of us? Mm -hmm. We're given so many opportunities to change our minds and do the right thing, repent. And uh, that's just human nature. That's just human nature. Sometimes we have to hit a head up against a brick wall yeah. more than once to uh, say, okay, uh, this ain't gonna work. This ain't working. 
there has to be a change where the light comes on, and that light is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Telling you that, hey, don't do that. Don't do it. It's going to hurt. Not just physically. Mm -hmm. Not just physically. So after Pilate gives him plenty of opportunities to change their mind, he says, washes his hands. He says, his blood is not on my hands. It's on your hands. Stop and think. Remember how he came into Jerusalem? Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. What a, what, a, what a reception. What a reception. But when they were in front of Pilate, crucify, crucify, crucify. In a matter of days. Mm -hmm. In a matter of days. What happened? What happened? The people who were in charge wanted things to stay the same. Yeah. And so that was, there's a, there's a part in scripture that says it is better for, better for one man to die than the whole of Israel because Israel was under Roman rule at that time. Yeah. So they'd rather kill one guy and save themselves, save their job, save their position, and let things continue to go along as they are. God had a different plan. Let's go to Matthew 28. Get your Bible, let's go to Matthew 28. We're going to be in verse 1 through 7. Right there. In the end of the Sabbath, as it, were, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, the remnant white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became his dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, as he said, Come, See the place where the Lord lie. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. And there shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Mm -hmm. So Whoa, after, they, after they took his body, beat him to where his body was unrecognizable, hung him on a cross to die, pierced his side, and they thought the words were over. Mm -hmm. yeah, like a, God had another plan. Yeah. God had another plan. Now, this is the, the, the main topic. The stone got rolled away from the stone. That tells you he wasn't there. Mm. Ray couldn't hold him in there. Amen. He was God. He was man at the same time. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to be in verse 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. All this was written way before time. Way before time. The Jewish people were still waiting on the Christ to show up. He was among them. Never even recognize it. They never even recognize it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And I'm going to show you how powerful of what Jesus did. How powerful that is, and it gives us the assurance that what he did was not a wrong. Verse 6 says, I mean not verse 6, verse 11, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6. I'm in the wrong chapter. Verse 11. I do this a lot. <laughs> Verse 11 says, And as such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. This has given us the assurance that what he did on the cross washes us clean. Hey. 
washes us clean. There's actually nothing else that's going to wash us clean but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Nothing else. No matter what you do, if you're not washed by the blood, you're, you don't belong to him. You're not his. You're not his. Let's go to Romans 10, verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9 tells us how we do this. And this is something that we go through every Sunday. Woody, Woody tells us every Sunday, every Sunday tells us something. And I know just everybody here is saved, but this is for the ones that don't understand and don't know Jesus as their Savior. Verse 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Not so, it doesn't say might. Probably, maybe it says, you shall be saved. This is what we do to be saved. One question that I have for you, and I want you to take this question, not just today, but every day, because it's a question that we have to answer each one of us has to answer this question at some point in our life. And when we answer that question, we have to be able to live according to what Jesus taught us. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do, we do with a thankful heart. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't get out of the way, how are people going to see Jesus in us? We have to get our own way. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's a hard lesson for some of us to learn. Yeah. Some more than others. Some more than others. This is going to be our last scripture for this morning. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 13 through 16. This is a question that I want you to ask yourselves every day. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man, <coughs> who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? The Simon Peter answered, I said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. For the eye says, Blessed are you, Peter, because it wasn't man that revealed it to you, but God the Father. We all have to get in, our, in, in a point in our lives to where <clears throat> that is revealed to us. Yes. Now, we can do like the Jews back in the day and deny it. We can just give up our union card. And uh, accept them, accept them, because that's all we're doing. Is you got to give up your card, your union card, and follow Jesus. Amen. He made a way for you and me uh, to to be able to come to God the Father. Don't make His sacrifice something minor, something minor. Give it the importance that it deserves. Amen. Because some, most, a lot of times, we get so busy with life. That we really don't. Life has a way of throwing things at you. And that's just the enemy trying to keep you from spending time with God. And my my my, my prayer for you is that you find the time to continue to grow in Christ hey, each yes. and every day. So my question to you is, who do you say Jesus is? That's a question that each one of us has to answer at some point in our lives. And most of us here have already answered that question. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. With that question <coughs> answered, uh, I'd like to close this out in prayer. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this time that you have, you have brought us together this morning, Father. We're just so thankful of everything that you do for us each and every day, Father. Help us to recognize you, Father, in all things, Father. 
the sunshine, the cool mornings. Our kids, our grandkids. The opportunity to gather together and worship you, praise you, because you are the only one that deserves all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Father, we're thankful for sharing this day with us, Father. We ask that throughout the day, Father, you continue to be with us, Father, and help us to face the challenges that this life brings throughout the day and each and every day, Father. Help us help us to be more like Jesus so that people can see Jesus in us rather than us, Father. There's no good in us, Father. The only thing that makes us good is you in us, Father. And for all these things, Father, I, I want to thank you. Thank you for all that were, that were here today, Father. I ask that you <clears throat> that you continue to guide us throughout the day, Father. And that we continue to remember you each and every day, Father, not just on special occasions, but each and every day, Father. Father, <clears throat> again, I thank you. I lift up Pastor Woody to you, Father. He couldn't be here with us this morning, Father, but he's always in our hearts, Father. We miss him. He is a great teacher, great leader, but more than anything, he's an awesome brother. Amen. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank everybody for coming out. Don't forget, at 10 o'clock, we will have our regular service, so we hope to see everybody back here. Uh, we're all headed to get something to eat, so we'll uh, see y'all shortly. Thank you.